But what is interesting in Ireland is that since the founding of this state, and particularly since the 1960s, there has been a dramatic contraction in inequality. Okay, free education helped enormously. Uh, there's been a rise in the middle classes. But that has been reversed in the last few years. And that, I suppose, is the nub of the issue now, which is A, the reversal, B, the global trends, and C, the impact it has on our collective society. But the important thing to mention and to remember is that gross inequality is not inevitable. It is the, it is the result of policy choices. And that's why we're, we're here with, with the political establishment and people who are running for election and very, very keen to, to, to speak to them directly about how they feel they can tackle this in the next five years and onwards. We knew coming into this election that all the political parties and candidates would say, yeah, of course we support women's equality. But what does that mean? And it had to mean something. And it really has to mean something for us as an organisation and for all the members of the Women's Council, because we need to be able to hold you to account when you get elected. The only way we can have the kind of society uh, that Jim and Orla outlined is if we change our social and economic model. It's not about tinkering with small policies at the side, although some of that can be very valuable. It's about a different way of approaching politics, a different way of approaching economics, and a different way of thinking <laughs> about society. At the moment, what we see in, in economics and in politics is Victorian morality of that the wealthy, those who make money, are good. Those who are poor, those who are vulnerable, they're in some way bad, morally bad. And we saw this most obviously um, all around um, debt quality. There's no such thing as debt equality. The rich got their debts paid off, the poor had to pay the debts, mainly off the rich. The first thing we have to do is ask ourselves, why do companies like that one you mentioned in Zambia and many, many more come through Dublin to pay their taxes, to register their, 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 their tax liability. It's because we let them and because we create these loopholes for them and we create this open door for them that makes it friendly and easy for them to avoid paying their taxes to wherever part of the planet it is that they should be paid. We facilitate that. These are my values and how I'd love to see this world before I leave it, you know, whereby when you get up in the morning, no matter who you are, you have the best because opportunity okay. to make, make the best day out of your life, whether that be, you know, having the right school to go to uh, for yourself, uh, the right school for your kids to go to, a good place to go to work and easy access to get there and good pay and a few bob as well to do the other things that we all like in life too and and that to be transcended across everybody. Education is actually key to people um, flourishing in society and like you said having a buy into society and people feel that they can achieve if they can actually access education and opportunities then and it breaks poverty cycles.